Welcome to the new JFK show number 167. We've got Rousen K and we've got Dr. Fetcher and we don't have Larry Rivera tonight. We are gravely concerned about him in Puerto Rico and our prayers are more than with Larry Rivera tonight. And um, that's really all I can say at the moment because Puerto Rico has been hit really hard. So, all right, we've got two parts tonight. Dr. Fetcher's in the second half. Dr. Sinke in the first half, so go ahead. All right, thank you very much, Gary. Uh, I'm going to just briefly uh, review uh, what we covered last time, just in case there's somebody new who wasn't in on it. But basically, the long and short of it is that for about two years now, I have been advocating that uh, Jack Ruby was not the garage shooter of Lee Harvey Oswald, that FBI agent James Bookout was. And one of the interesting things about the whole situation is that there have been no images of James Bookout from the time of the JFK assassination and thereafter for the rest of his life, which seems very unusual. Uh, and especially since he was like Oswald's shadow. He attended every interrogation. He was at the uh, lineups. He went to the midnight press conference. And yet somehow or other, we identify all these other people who are hovering around Oswald, but never him. So it's a very uh, suspicious thing. But what happened recently, meaning, you know, about eight or nine days ago, is that uh, somebody from England uh, came up with uh, this image that you're seeing here, purportedly of James Booker. And they're claiming that instead of being a short man, as I have alleged, and keep in mind, I also want to point this out before we start, there are two bases for believing that James Bookout was short. One is that Mr. Hosty, his you know colleague, the James Hosty, said that on the 22nd in the afternoon that Bookout was looking for him in the crowded hallway of the police department and that he had to stand on a pedestal to find him. He had to stand up on something because he couldn't see over the heads of all the reporters who were mostly just average height guys. So. That yeah. suggests that he was short. And this uh -huh. man here obviously is very tall. It's hard to imagine him having to stand on a pedestal for any reason whatsoever. And then the other thing that suggested the book out was short is that in his testimony to the Warren Commission, he said that he was on Main Street during the motorcade, just close to Dealey Plaza, but not quite there on Main Street, but that he never laid eyes on JFK because there were people in front of him. Well, <laughs> You know, again, you know, you, what do you have in front of him? You know, uh, it's not like it was a basketball team. So he probably was a pretty short guy on that basis uh, as well. But anyway, they've come up with this guy and claimed that this man here, who's got his shoulders back and he's standing closest to the exhibit, that he is James Bookout. Well, I disputed that immediately on, on several bases. But what's come up since last week is that it began to occur to me that I think I know who he really was, and that is he was Ranger, Texas Ranger Bob Crowder. And there's two reasons why I started thinking that way. The first is that the subject of this photograph is not the men. The subject of the photograph is the display and the fact that they had this bank robbery conference going on in which the FBI was basically trying to educate bankers about how to, I guess, uh, prepare themselves and cope with the risk of, uh, of having a bank robbery. And so this display was part of it. And so they want to show you the display. And we've got these three men here looking at the display. But again, they talk about the display before they talk about the men. So that tells me that they wanted your eyes to go to the display first. And then they talk about the men. Now, it's quite true that normally in a photograph, they expect you to look at the photograph from left to right. But in this case, since the exhibit is on the right, and they talked about the exhibit first, and, and that was the main focus, it occurred to me that maybe they wanted you, in this case, to look at the men from right to left. That was the first reason why I started, because they, they mentioned this, this uh, Dallas Ranger, Captain Bob Crowder, first. They, they say that Dallas Ranger, Captain Bob Crowder, is checking the exhibit with the FBI agents. Uh, so that was the first reason. But the second reason why I thought to myself that he's probably Crowder is because if you look closely, you'll see that he's standing somewhat apart from the other two, that the other two are standing closer to each other. 
then uh, then the middle one is standing to him. He seems to be a little aloof compared to the others. And it seemed to me that it was more likely that they were the two FBI agents, and he was sort of the odd man out, who was this different kind of a fellow, who was a uh, who was a Texas uh, Ranger. So that's what made me start thinking that hey, so when as soon as I got the idea that he was probably Crowder, the next thing I did was start looking for images of Crowder, and I was able to find them. Go to the next image, please. All right, now this is an image of uh, Bob Crowder, and I actually found out his height. His, it's actually listed, I found it registered. Uh, his height was six foot three. And uh, you're gonna see at the end that one of our associates, whom we refer to as the wizard, made a GIF file, which basically causes these pictures to sort of merge into each other. And you're going to see that the stance that you see here on this man actually matches the, the, the stance of the other man very, very well. It's a seamless transition. And as I point out from my background as a chiropractor, that a person's stance is, is their neuromuscular signature. It's, it's basically all the reflexes and all the muscle twitches that cause you to hold yourself in a certain way. It's built up over time. It's deeply entrenched in your habits. It's well below the conscious, conscious level. It's something you're doing subconsciously, the way you hold yourself. And in this case, you're going to see that the, that the stance is exactly the same between the two of them. That's a very, very defining thing about a person. And even their physical proportions uh, and their posture is very much the same. So you'll see that at the end. So as soon as I saw that this man is like like that man is a tall, very, very gangly kind of a guy. Uh, I began thinking that I was right, that it was indeed Crowder. Go to the next image, please. All right, so this is the two of them together. Uh, and you see that the width of the shoulders and, uh, and the length of the arms uh, matches very well. Uh, there's one distinctive difference about the face, and that is that the man on the right seems to have a puffy face. He's got wow, puffy cheeks, he kind of got a kind of a bloated looking face, whereas the other guy doesn't. But what I'm telling you is that I think they did that on purpose. And I'll tell you, and I'll show you why in a moment. Go to the next image. He, he, Ralph, he could also, of course, have been on some sort of drug regimen that made well, his face possibly, puffy. But I mean, this is much a much older guy. But yeah, I'm okay. certainly open to, as we previously discussed, that they manage the fates. That All they right, very good. It. All right, now, what we have on the left here is the latest image of James Bookout to the assassination. It isn't close. It's 1937. But in other words, what I'm saying is that there are no images of James Bookout later than 1937 that we had prior to this one. So this was the closest image there was to how he may have looked in 1963. Ralph, that's truly extraordinary. From 1937 to 63, no photographs no of James photograph. Bookout? Absolutely none. And that that, that, can, like that a, cannot have been the historical sequence of events. They had to go back and vacuum them up. They've been taken well. out, of the, right. out of history. Right. Now this now this image on the left on the left uh, it is definitely book out no one disputes that I don't but it is also an altered image I want you to look at his eyebrows he has what I call drag queen eyebrows no human being is born with eyebrows like that if a person has them it's because they either tweezed or they plucked or they applied makeup and things to get it to look like that but you couldn't have that. Nobody could be born that way. By the way, I chatted, uh, uh, Ralph, that you can have the whole show, so you don't have to worry about right. rushing right, we'll, it. Right, we'll and go, we'll and if I ask a question, you can take time to answer it. Now, I, okay, all right, with that in mind, then, I will go ahead on a slight tangent and point out, and I didn't bring it with me because, again, I thought we were going to be on a real tight budget of time. But the wizard is the one who found an image of James Bookout from his high school years at Wilson High School, in which he was a member of the ROTC. And it turns out that even though he was in the ROTC, he never did go into the military. He went uh, to 
college and then he went to law school and then from law school he went to the FBI. So he was never in the military but he was in the ROTC. And at that time, and I think in that image he was about 16 years old, at that time he was actually chubby. I mean really fat in the face but fat in the body too. He was just a chubby kid. That's just the way he was. Now it looks to me as I look at this image of him on the left that he slimmed down some. I mean, uh, he doesn't look as chubby as he did when he was younger, uh, but there's still a remnant of it. And the remnant of it is that he's still very puffy and, and very cheeky in the face. If you look on the left, he definitely looks just a little bit blown up in the face, like he just had kind of a, a very kind of a bloat, slightly bloated face is what we're seeing on, on him on the left. And on the right, similarly, his face does look bloated. So what I'm suggesting to you is that they used the image on the left as a model and took the face of Bob Crowder on the right and they went ahead and made it look bloated uh, so that it would remind us of this image of James Bookout on the left. Now, here's another thing to think about that I think is very, very telling. And that is that if, he was only 23 years old here on the left. But if you look, you can see he's already got significant hairline recession. That is not a boyish hairline, okay? That is definitely showing signs that this guy is starting to lose his hair. And he's got that peninsula effect in the front. And you can see that he's developing the, uh, you know, the, the recession on the side there. And uh, he, didn't, he definitely had more hair than that when he was younger. In fact, I didn't bring it, but I have an image of him from two years before. So it would have been 1935. And actually, he had a lot fuller hairline. It was not nearly as receded even in 1935. So the fact is, he lost quite a bit of hair even in those two years to wind Ralph, up looking like that. If you like, we can pause the recording and you can pull it up. Uh, all right. If, if you think it'll be interesting to see, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, let me go ahead and get, get out of here. Go ahead. Okay, we're ready. I'll tell you. On the left is that image from the ROTC that I mentioned. Uh, and you can't see because it's cropped, but he's a, he was the shortest guy in the image. It was a group of about a dozen young men uh, who were posing as the R ROTC guys, and he was definitely uh, the shortest one. And you can see that he has a um, kind of a wide face there. And, uh, and then on, to the right of that is his image from SMU from 1935. And there, to me, it looks like he has a pretty uh, uncompromised hairline. It looks pretty full. I wouldn't uh, consider it to be receded uh, at all from my eye. And then uh, even in 36, I don't see very much. But then suddenly in 37, he's got that peninsula effect and the receding in the temple area that really, really stands out. So in a period of no more than two years, he, he lost has, a lot of hair. <laughs> he lost quite a lot of hair. Okay, now go back to the image that we were looking at. And um, we're convinced these are authentic, right? Unaltered, no subs. Well, I'm not going to go as far as to say that. No, I mean, I think, no, I think that they're authentically him. I don't doubt that they are him, but I'm, I wouldn't tell you that they didn't do things to try to uh, make them, uh, doctor them. And, so and of course, all this would be very peculiar unless he played some rather significant role that had no, to be right. kept Why secret. Exactly. All right, now, okay, so the point I'm making is this. On the, on the, the picture on the right is from 1968, so that would have been uh, 31 years later. So what we would have to believe if that was him is that between 35 and 37, he lost a significant amount of hair. And then from 37 to, to 68, it all stabilized and basically it stopped happening and now he <laughs> retained all his hair. So he, yeah. his hair was going downhill at a rapid rate and then after that it just leveled off and he never lost another strand. That is what we'd have to believe if, if, we, if we really thought that both of them, those guys were, uh, were James Bookout. So again, I want to make it very clear to the audience that regardless of whether I'm right about this uh, proposition that this guy is really uh, Ranger 
Crowder that there's still no chance that he was James Book now. I mean, that is just ridiculous. But I am 100% sure that he was Crowder. All right, go to the next image. All right, let, let, me, let me get something straight here, Ralph. Yes. So for all these years, not one picture of Book out, and then suddenly this one has appeared. Where did it come from? Oh, well, I'm glad, okay, and this is another very, very peculiar thing, and I'm glad you brought it up, Gary, is this. This picture came from a newspaper article from a small town newspaper known as the, uh, the uh, Marshall Messenger, the Marshall Messenger News. And I looked it up on the map. Marshall is a little town in East Texas, 150 miles from Dallas. And supposedly uh, the, the Dallas FBI went there to put on this bank robbery exhibition for the local people and the local bankers of the little town of Marshall, and that there was an article written about it in the local Marshall paper. And this is, was found by a guy in England who goes by the name of Steve Rowe. And he's a lone nutter. You know, he's totally a, you know, a defender of, the, of everything. So suddenly he, he brought this out he to the world. Out, but, you know, to me, it, cert it certainly looks like a plant, Ralph. Well, here's what's interesting about it, Jim, is that after he found it and reported it, I went ahead and rejoined one of the services that I used previously looking for images of book out to see if they would find it now that he found it. And sure enough, I did find it. I joined an outfit called newspapers.com that mines newspapers from all over, going all the way back, even to the 1800s. And sure enough, on the first page, they, they came up with this article from the Marshall Messenger, which showed the image. But a year ago, when I was a member of it, I did the same search and didn't find it. So somehow it got in there this time, and it wasn't there uh, a year ago. So I'm very suspicious about the whole thing. Uh, but anyway, this is another image of Bob Crowder from his Ranger days. And you can see the same basic body shape and form, the, the great height and, uh, and uh, the length of the arms. But the, the, main dif the big difference is that instead of having an angular face like he's showing here, he's got this kind of bloated uh, face that, uh, that but, a, that but of course, now the guy in the UK was sending you a photo a book out, wasn't he? He well, he sent this photo claiming it was book out, right? Yeah, but we, but we, you we, found it searching for Crowder. No, no, no. I I also searched for book out, and 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 it delivered it as book out. Um, well, but but here's the thing about it. you see, what the, what the program does is it just looks for the name, and in of the caption. And in the caption, it it's, said, It's a Crowder. computer. No, the caption from the newspaper said that this is Crowder and Bookout and one other FBI agent whom they didn't name. So they named one of the FBI agents, which was Bookout, and they named the, the Ranger. And we found the name of uh, the other FBI agent. He was, he was also involved in the JFK assassination. It uh, begins with an M. Uh, and he actually is the guy who interviewed uh, Oswald. He, he took vital information from Oswald. Uh, so he did, he did talk to Oswald. He was the third guy, although they, they didn't name him. But they named Book out in the caption, and they named Crowder. But, uh, but you, anyway, keep going. I want, I want to get to the next picture here. All right, so this is another – now, this image of Crow, this is an image of Crowder on the right, and this was from his early days in the Ranger – force and and you can see he looks younger his face looks younger but what i have circled there are the ears and jim as you've said many times you know the ears are as distinctive as the fingerprints and in this case we're seeing a very good correlation between the ear of bob crowder on the right and the disputed figure on the left in terms of the size the shape the pitch of the ear and the way it contours it's down. It's almost as though he has the mumps on the left. Yes, indeed. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that, Jim, because, and I'm telling you, they, they're the ones who gave him uh, those mumps. Oh, yeah, let me point one other thing about out that I think is uh, worth noting, and that is that we're also seeing this jet black hair on this figure, supposedly of Bookout. Uh, it's interesting because I happen to know that 
Bookout's son has very light hair. It's not blonde, but it's kind of like a very sandy brown, a very light color. Seems very unlikely to me that Bookout actually had jet black hair. A lot of people who are bald wear hats to conceal it, by the way, Ralph. You know, he might actually have been relatively bald. Well, we're going to see him without his hat in a moment in a very, very important picture. But anyway, at this point, the point here is that uh, the ears match very well. And I'll also point out, as I've done before with other images, that the length of the neck matches very well, because that's an area of life in which people vary tremendously. You've got people with very long necks, you've got people with very short necks, and you've got people with lengths in between. These two guys have the same length neck, the same slope of the shoulder, uh, and it's a very good correlation uh, despite the age difference. All right, go to the next image, please. All right, so, <laughs> okay. Now, as soon as I started saying, you know, I think that this guy is, uh, is uh, Crowder, my opponent started saying, oh, no, 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 this guy is Crowder. Now, the reason why they couldn't say that the middle guy was Crowder is because we identified him. I wish I could think of his name. You want me to go get it? I can get you his name. Sure, sure. You want me to pause? What? Yeah. Go ahead and look it up while we're running. That's okay. Yeah. Hold on I'll a put second. the glass, hourglass backwards a little bit. All right, Manning Clemens. Manning Clemens. He was an FBI agent, and I, he, he testified to the Warren Commission. And uh, basically what he did was he basically just uh, gathered vital information from Oswald, uh, his name, address, uh, weight, height. And, and he also he did ask him about the Alex Heidel uh, identification. So he, uh, he was very much involved uh, and with Bookout. I mean, he and Bookout were pretty tight. Uh, I don't doubt that. And, and did, nobody did, is- Does Lee tell him the Alex Idell identification was made up by Chauncey Holt at the Los Angeles Stamp and Stationery uh, Store? No, I don't think he Probably and, did. Uh, this is the middle, right, so uh, if you go back to the, um, go back to the image that we were looking at before that. All right. Manning Clements. All right. So, all right. Let, can you make this larger then? Yeah. Get it as large as you can. Okay. Okay. So, the guy in the middle is Manning Clements. No one is disputing it. And so, theoretically, then, one of the other two men is James Bookout, and the other of the two men is, uh, J uh, is uh, Bob Crowder. So, as soon as I started saying that this guy is Crowder, this is like a default move in chess where they had to, they had, if they were going to stay alive at all in this debate, they were going to have to claim that this man on the left was the legendary Sheriff Bob Crowder. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this guy because an interesting character. Uh, he was in the military and then he was actually with the Dallas police for a while, but then he got with the Texas Rangers. And the thing that sort of blasted him into uh fame was that there was a, uh, a breakout at, uh, at a prison, at a Texas prison, and these um, inmates took some people hostage, and uh, Bob Crowder alone, wearing his guns, and sometimes he would wear two guns on his, on his belt, uh, walked into the prison, into this zone where the inmates had taken over. He did it alone, and under, with no protection and with no conditions set in advance, but yet he, he ended up convincing them to put down their weapons and to release the hostages and to basically give up. And nobody, nobody actually got hurt and, and, and his courage and everything, that's sort of what, you know, turns him into kind of a, a lone ranger, kind of a ranger, <laughs> uh, which, which was a reputation that he, uh, retained, uh, you know, for the rest of his life. Um, so they, they're being forced to, to claim that uh, this guy on the left was Crowder. Now, you know, what's interesting about it is that when I looked at him, I never, ever considered that he was Crowder. Uh, I can tell you Crowder's age in 1968, and that is he was 67 years old. 
Now, to me, I mean, I'm only a few months away from 67 myself right now. Now, I'll tell you something about this man on the right that most people wouldn't observe. But do you notice that he seems to be leaning forward, that his neck is kind of going forward? Uh, in fact, when we look at it up close, you're going to see that his neck is really going, it's jutting forward. It's not vertical the way that the, the neck is on this man on the right. Now, what we have here is a situation that is very much in parallel with what we went through with Gorilla Man and, and Billy Lovelady. Remember, I pointed out that Gorilla Man had this forward neck that was causing his head to jut forward, uh, whereas uh, Lovelady had a vertical neck. And when you compare the images, you know right away, if you have any background in this area, that they can't be the same man. Because it wasn't just a matter of uh, of a particular way he stood that day. It was, it, no, it's, a, it's an anatomical thing. It's built into his spine. And so there's no way they can be the same man. Well, in this case, this man here has also got a forward neck. But the other thing I want you to realize is that you don't see his arms at all. Look down on his body and you see his jacket coming down. He's obviously very tall, just like the other man, but you don't see his arms. And you would see his arms if they were hanging down. The arms naturally tend to rotate internally when you're just letting them droop. He appears to me to be at least an inch taller than the other guy. Well, that's possible, but you got to remember, it's also possible, though, Jim, that he's closer to the camera. Right, right, right. No, I, I grant that. Him loom larger. I grant that. Yeah, okay, so that's another possibility. But here's what I deduct from what I'm seeing here. I'm deducting that he is standing with his hands clasped behind his back. Yeah. yeah. He's doing this kind of thing. Right, which would tend to jut his, his jaw forward a bit. Right, exactly. And, and, and let me tell you, I'm telling you that, and I'm telling the audience that with a very high degree of certainty, that he is standing yeah. with his hands clasped behind his yeah. back. Yeah, good. And, and I want to add an addendum to that. That, you know, we have a lot of images of James Bookout, I mean, not James Bookout, but of Bob Crowder with guns. He always wore a gun as a marshal. And also, he talked about guns a lot, about which guns he preferred. Uh, and uh, you really get this impression that, you know, he was this tough lawman who, you know, was always sort of prepared and ready to draw his gun. And to my mind, I just don't see him, Bob Crowder, this legendary lawman, standing with his hands behind his back because obviously you can't act, you know. I mean, the whole purpose of clasping your hands is to sort of send the message that you're harmless and you're not going to draw your gun. But that's not the message he would want to send. He was a guy that basically was telling bad guys near and far that, yeah, you make trouble and uh, I'm prepared to fight you and I'll draw my gun. In fact, he's also famous for a quote that they still use today at the website of the Texas Rangers, that a ranger is a, is a man that is prepared, as a lawman is prepared to deal with any situation, uh, no matter how dangerous and treacherous, and without needing any supervision or uh, instruction from any superior, that he has it within himself to know what to do in any crisis. And they've got that quote from Bob Crowder on their site, and putting all that together, first of all, I don't think he would stand with his hands behind his back. But the other thing, and we're going to make this photo larger, is this man, to my eyes, is older than 67. He looks more like 77 to me. He really has a wizened look. He looks like an old man. Uh, he looks like uh, he's reached the point in life where he looks like he's old and that he was, he was, he was born an old soul. He <laughs> was never young. And I, and, I, and I don't believe that he could possibly be Bob uh, Crowder. But fortunately, we found an image of Bob Crowder when he was 63. So therefore, only four years younger than he was here. And we can compare that image to this one, and we're going to do that. So anyway, let's go to the next image. All right, we're going to take a break right there. JFK show number 167. We'll be right back. All right, JFK. 167. All right, Ralph and K, let's keep it rolling, man. Okay, go to the next image, Gary. 
Oh, uh, here's another picture of him, uh, Crowder, and you can see he's got a gun on his right side in, the, in its holster, and he's got a gun in his left hand. I mean, I brought this mainly to show you, you know, this was a guy who was into guns, and I don't, I just don't think he would stand with his hands behind his back. It's too far away from his guns. All right, go to the next image. All right, this, it may be the most important image. This is Bob Crowder in the 63rd year of his life. So it would have been four years before uh, the image that we are uh, disputing and trying to place him. And what I want you to notice, uh, first of all, is that uh, he did very well with his hair. Uh, he held on to it. Uh, he wore it kind of kind of long, actually. And uh, he, uh, he uh, you can see in his face here, if you look at it, that he still has a sort of a hint of youth in his face, meaning that you can kind of get a sense of how he looked as when he was younger. You know, there's he looks at he looks a tad like Donald Rumsfeld to me. He does. He looks like Donald Rumsfeld to you. But uh, anyway, he certainly. I, I, my point is, he does not look anywhere near decrepit. Okay, and, and in fact, he looks anything but decrepit. He looks rugged. He looks fit, and he looks. Uh, he just does not look the least uh, ancient and and, uh, and and decrepit. And as you'll see in a minute, the other man very much looks decrepit. All right, so go to the next image. All right, so this is a comparison of the of this man on the left, who the other side, who are holding out to you know save their their uh, their their book out sighting that they have to claim that this is uh, Bob Crowder. But I want you to notice how very, very old he looks compared to the man on the right. The difference in age looks to be much more than four years, in my opinion. So we know for sure that the man on the right, Bob Crowder, was 63. Could he have aged that much? Look how much hair. Look how his hair is way, way back. He's got a big lake there of baldness that's got his hairline, you know, clear back hair. Well, and, and his hair doesn't come as as forward on the temple as it does on the right. I mean, those are right. completely I mean, no, different, completely now, different listen, hairlines. Uh, listen, I'll point something else out to you, Jim, is this. We know this about the way men typically lose hair, that the biggest period that men lose the most hair is between the ages of 30 and 50. And between 50 and 70, Hair loss slows down. There's not usually as much. They still lose a little, but the, they, they don't lose as much between in those decades. And then after 70, they, in la very late in life, they may start losing hair rapidly again if they're kind of nearing the end. So that's what can happen. But it's very, very like, unlikely statistically that a man who had this much hair on the right at 63 would have proceeded then in just four years to, to have as much baldness as this man does here on the left. Now, what's, he, what's even worse in trying to equate these two men is that on the left here, this man, as you can see, and I drew a line to show you that he had a f forward neck syndrome where, you see what happens, Jim, is that somewhere early in life, he started leaning like that. Maybe he had a desk job or he was leaning over a desk all day long and he was doing it just out of practice back then. But when you do it for decades, it, it actually kind of reshapes your whole spine and you get to where you can't stand up straight anymore. And I think that was his situation. And there he is, his neck is going forward. And I don't mean this forward, but he's going diagonally forward. Whereas the neck on the right, and when I say the neck, I'm talking about the, about the actual spinal column, the cervical spinal column, is relatively vertical, whereas this one is relatively jutting uh, forward. Uh, and there is so much dislike between the two that there is simply no way that they can both be uh, the same spine. Uh, it's impossible. I also made a note that if you look at his nose on the left, he, he had a very, very hooked uh, cartilage there. It looks, from our angle looking at his profile, it really looks like he's got a captain Mr. kind of a nose. He looks like Mr. Potato Head. 
<laughs> Whereas uh, there was no second, there was no hook at all to the nose of uh, of Captain Crowder here, and that wouldn't change in four years. It's not as though his nose was suddenly going to get hooked between the ages of sixty three and sixty seven. So when you put it together, you see he's got much more hair, much more, and and he couldn't possibly lose that much in just four years. Not at that age, okay? At an earlier age, I might buy it, but not between the years of 63 and 67. Uh, his nose is very different. Also, I, I didn't note it. I didn't actually uh, write any text for it, but the ears are also very different. This guy's ear was very weird. It was very flat against his head. He had practically no pitch at all. Uh, and he had a very, very vertical helix. Whereas you can see how rounded the helix is on Crowder's ear on the right. So I didn't write yeah. it in text, but the ears are very, very different. The hair is different. The nose is different. The chin's the, different. The neck is Every, different. The lips different. Everything. Oh, the lips are different too. Yeah, he had fuller lips. This guy had more, you know, pencil-like lips. Fuller lips on the right. But to me, what stands out the most is that to me, there looks like there's at least a 10 year difference in age. This man looks decrepit compared to, uh, to Crowder. Crowder to me looks a lot more than four years younger than this man. Or I really, what I should say, this man looks a lot more than four years older uh, than the man on the right. So anyway, the contention that my opponents are making, and they're doing it out of necessity, they're doing it out of default, they have to do it, in claiming that this guy standing with his hands behind his back, bent over like an old man, was the legendary uh, Ranger uh, Bob Crowder. I think it's ridiculous. I mean, I think it's preposterous. And and the uh, the image of the other man who stood straight and tall with a straight back, and who looks sort of rugged like a lawman. Yeah, that I think is. The only thing that doesn't match on him is the bloated face. But hey, we know that they docked your photos and they've been doing it now since before the assassination. And, and I have a suspicion that they did this one quite recently and they came up with this uh, image for claiming book out. But it, it really- Well, you only began to sort this out recently, Ralph, so they had to fabricate some new evidence to counteract it. Exactly. And think about this, Jim, for a second too. If this picture has existed since 1968, an image of James Bookout standing at a at a FBI uh, robbery exhibit, why didn't they bring it up right away? I mean, I've been just talking about this for two years and claiming that Bookout was short. I mean, I mean, I didn't know about it. I couldn't find it. But you can't tell me that. I mean, if it existed at all, if it's real, if it really was in that paper, they should have known about it from the beginning. And they should have uh, been throwing it in my face. The fact that they waited until now, no, I'm not buying it. I think it's made up. I think that they doctored it and came up with it. They just picked what they thought they could work with to come up with an image. But uh, no way. There's no way that, there's no way that uh, that guy is a uh, book out. There's no way this guy's crowded. Okay, go to the next image. All right, I brought this along because it's... Speaking of the gorilla man. Right. <laughs> Gorilla Man, you can see he's got the forward neck on the right. <laughs> Love Lady had a perfectly vertical neck, very good lengthening of a neck. I mean, that's actually, you might say, a chiropractor's dream to see such a nice balance like that. Whereas this guy on the right, I'm almost feeling his pain because when he's got his head cringed back, you have to do that because if you're looking... And there's there, that pocket on his shirt, back, Ralph. This kind of thing, it's a very bad situation. And this guy probably, well, if he lived, he wound up with cervical. And there's fire. that pocket on his shirt that Groden forgot about when he yeah, shot Billy Lovelady. Ridiculous pocket, the big, 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 big flap going down. And, and obviously, we don't see that uh, on the other images. So, yeah, it really is a mess. But I wanted you. And it's so ridiculous they had Billy unbutton his shirt. He obviously yeah. did not wear it what unbutton. Was the point of doing it if it wasn't the same shirt? I mean, yeah. it's just. So it's just I know everything yeah. about this case becomes increasingly absurd the more absurd you study it. Right. It is. We're call it. We're gonna call it. it what I called, it's what I call the bizarro world of JFK. That's what we're talking about. It, yeah, Grodin's blunder. Own bizarro world. Okay, let's go to the next image. 
All right, so this is another look at this. I mean, just go back for one second, Ralph. I mean, why could anyone in their wildest dreams imagine the guy on the right was the man on the left? I mean, yeah. I mean, look, let's just consider. The guy on the right has got this small head like a monkey uh, that was very round, whereas the guy on the left has got this longer head. He's got a very small kind of a blunted nose, whereas this guy's got a larger nose. He's got a very small ear, whereas Love Lady had a larger ear. He's got the forward neck. Uh, he's got uh, of this big barrel chest. Uh, everything about them is dissimilar. There's, I mean, they don't look the least bit alike. They don't even look like they could be related as distant cousins. They look totally completely Right, different. right, good, yeah, and I yet, agree completely. Look, look at the body mass for crying out loud, the mass of their James, body. It's only in the JFK assassination that people would make such preposterous claims. And it's because they're grasping after straws. They're trying desperately to perpetrate a fraud on the public. Panic and desperation. And they have to resort to absurdities. To a lie, holding on to a lie. Okay, go on to the next image. So anyway, I, this one uh, came out very, very clear. So I, you know, I, I really wanted to mm. show it. Now I'll point out something else to you that I think is very, very telling is that when people get older, they start developing a much more rigid face. They lose any sense of relaxation in the face. And, you know, there's a condition known as Parkinson's disease in which the face develops a very, very rigid uh, kind of a look. Uh, and it's part of the disease. Uh, and, uh, and, it's, and a lot of people will get Parkinson's disease. But even in the older people who don't get Parkinson's disease, they will tend at a latter age in life to develop this very blank stare and this very kind of a stiff uh, holding of the face where they lose the ability to have a relaxed face. But I want you to notice how relaxed his face looks on the right and how unrelaxed the man's face look uh, on, the, on the left. Uh, and, and, and the very, uh, and, and you can even sort of sense the tension there even in his stare that he's looking kind of blankly at the at the exhibit uh you know, almost zombied in a little bit compared to what we're seeing on the right where you're seeing a more animated face okay big, yeah, big, big, got, no big, reason yeah. to think in four years he would go from right to left no way couldn't possibly happen there is no way that they are the same man and in this particular image, I want you to notice that really we're getting this real sense of a vertical neck. I mean, I can hold a, I can hold a ruler to it, and you would see that that neck is going straight up and down, whereas on this guy, he's got this angular thing going where it's, it's just an impossible thing to equate them. Absolutely out of the question. Okay, let's go to the next image. Now, this on the left is the last image of uh, Bob Crowder that was taken that we know of. It's the, his oldest image, uh, probably taken shortly before his death. I wanted to show you here how well the ears match. Again, we have a very, very good match of the ears. Uh, and, of course, as he got older, you know, he developed... Uh, loose skin under his neck the way people do. But on the right, in comparison, you're really seeing this very, very bloated look. Uh, in fact, his neck, the bloat, it, it involves not just his face, but even his neck. Everything seems bloated. It's really- Ralph, what kind of a career did this guy have? Was he very successful? As a, as a ranger? Yeah. He was the head of Company B of the Texas Rangers. Uh, and he, uh, like I say, he was highly revered. Uh, he was, uh, and I'll tell you, there's uh, so many photographs of him. I mean, there's, I mean, he was, uh, he represented the Rangers at all kinds of functions. And that's why his photo got taken so many times. He was, uh, again, he was sort of, uh, he became the uh, kind of the living legend of the Texas Rangers and, and the guy that, they wanted to be the face of the Texas Rangers. So again, he showed up at a lot of events and had his picture taken uh, a great many times. Highly respected, highly revered. 
Uh, yeah, unlike book out, no pictures at all. Now think about that. A book out, no pictures at all. Th from 37 until supposedly 68. And then- and This guy's all over the place. And then after that, okay. Uh, see if there's any more. Is there any more? All right, this, I think this is the last image. And I brought this is because uh, this is the son of James Bookout. His name is Jim Bookout, and he is a constable. And I'm not ex positive totally, but I'm pretty sure a constable refers to a, a deputy who basically works to assist a judge, that he works in the courtroom to maintain order and to, uh, I guess, you know, swear Eat people. Donuts. And do and, de and do, does courtroom work as the uh, deputy, Deputy Jim Bookout, and he actually I'm sure he's a very very nice decent man too. You know he started a foundation to help the families of fallen police officers, and I believe it's called the Texas Flag, <coughs> Texas Peace Officers Flag Foundation, and they try to help the families of fallen uh, police officers. And again, I, I'm sure he is a very, very decent and good man. Uh, but he is the son of James Bookout. I want you to notice he has very light hair. Uh, and also, obviously, he's very heavy set. He's, he can't be very tall because you see the flag behind him and you, 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 get an, you know how tall flags are. They're not that tall uh, when it's just resting on the ground there as it is. Uh, but I want to say... I don't want to sound mocking about, but I, but it is a little bit funny that the idea that this man on the left was his biological father is pretty ridiculous, uh, and for two reasons. One being that genetics has a lot to do with body type and basically the way you turn out, and obviously if he got his genetics from his father, uh, you'd start wondering if... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was adopted, you know. <laughs> but, but, but then, but then again, there's a second reason why uh, fathers and sons are more likely to kind of look alike, and that is because they've been eat they were eating at the same table for much of their lives, right? I mean, they, the father, the son was brought up in the father's home. They were sitting at the table eating the same kind of food. So if the father was eating fattening food. The son was eating fattening food, and it may even pertain to their exercise habits. If the father tended to be, you know, inactive, know. didn't do very much. Uh, what happened? Uh, Just George? stop sharing. You can put, uh, put the same is true. Uh, you know, the Ralph on the main screen, Gary. Or, so, so there's a much yeah. greater likelihood, uh, even outside of the genetics, and the genetics count for an awful lot, that you know the father <laughs> is going to basically, uh, you might say, inherit the body type and characteristics uh, of the father. So again, the, the idea that that could have been uh, his father. I, I really like uh, the zeal with which you're pursuing this, Ralph. I love it. <laughs> All right, now the last thing that I have is the uh, GIF that was sent by, made by the wizard who supports me 100% in this. Okay. Uh, so let's put that All right. in, okay? Let me uh, look at it. All right, I sure hope that it works because- uh, Do I need to pause or are we good? I can keep talking, you know, while Keep talking, can... keep okay. talking. Yeah. But uh, I, I just want to repeat what I said earlier, that this has to do with your person's neural yeah. muscles. Can you send it to me real quick? I did. You're not finding it? Just this minute? No, I sent it to you earlier. Okay, I'm sending it again. Okay. Keep talking, Ralph. Okay. But, you know, early in life, you know, you, 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 you see people that in your life, you see the way they carry themselves, you see the way their posture is, and, and, and basically you're subconsciously imitating them, and you're developing certain postural habits that, you know, get reinforced over time, and the result is that as the decades pass, you have a particular way of moving around and standing around and, and doing everything you do, and you don't even know what it is. You've never looked at it, you've never seen it, but... Uh, it's uh, it, it basically defines who you are in your neuromuscular uh, self, and and it becomes a very very deep seated habit. You really practice it day in and day out without knowing it, and this is true of everybody. All right, it's sent. 
And it certainly is true of, uh, of Bob Crowder as much as it is uh, anyone else. So we're going to see that in a moment. That we've got so Crowder comes across as a pretty good guy. Bookout is kind of a mystery, isn't he? You, you're not really able to trace his history or figure out what he accomplished in his life or who he really was. I mean, he's an enigma, is he not? Well, very much so, but I want you to think about, I want you to make a contrast between Hosty and Bookout. Of the two, Bookout spent much more time with Oswald. You realize that Hosty only attended that first interrogation, in which Oswald got mad at him for going to visit his wife without telling him. And after that, they left Hosty out of it because they figured he was agitating Oswald. So, And Bookout just took over. So the guy who spent more time with Oswald than anyone was book out. So you would think that the guy who was going to write a book and go on the talk show circuit was book out. But no, Hosty writes a book. Hosty goes on the talk, out, talk show circuit. Hosty goes to England to testify at the mock trial in 1984. Where was book out? Nowhere to be seen. Further, further circumstantial confirmation of yes. your thesis. And Ralph. I know the reason why, because Bookout did not want his mug. Right. Okay, if you got it, let go. He didn't want to provoke anyone thinking about thinking. it. And if if right. he's out of sight, he's right. out of mind. Right. He, too much at stake. Uh, and you would, you know that immediately after the assassination, he went on a six months leave of absence. Yeah, well, that was clever too, wasn't it? And I'm sure it was paid. I don't think that that's that right. Was no, paid. it was well paid, Ralph. Well yeah, paid. Probably, probably got a bonus. Extra, extra travel um, money. Hey, I'm gonna have to um, leave the meeting and come right back. Why? Do you want me to pause? Yeah. Okay. Done. Just looking for the gift. Here it is. It's not on the screen, Garrett. Okay, hang on. Well, you know, I know we're going to be done pretty soon. I'll just keep talking. Are we, are we still? Uh, yeah, we're, we're recording. Yeah. Okay. I, I really want to say it. I'm, 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 real, I'm not trying to sound immodest here, but I really want you, the audience, to know that I am a hundred. I'm not ninety-nine percent. I'm a hundred percent certain that that tall figure with his shoulders back, standing straight as an arrow and standing apart from the FBI agents. I am 100% certain that that was Ranger Bob Crowder. I don't have the slightest bit of doubt that that, that was him and that they did things, particularly to bloat his face. And they may have doctored his hair too, you know, to try to just mm -hmm. mimic that 1937 photo of book out from the uh, yearbook, from the L MSU uh, law book, uh, law school yearbook. All right, there we go. Here comes a gift. Is that what it does? Yeah, but it, no, it's gonna. It's supposed to rifle. You know, it, it's a series of moving images, Gary. Yeah, you know, a series of moving images. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, it, well, it didn't work for me in the, uh, in, the in the PowerPoint either. That's why I sent it separately. Well, you got to have it on slideshow in the PowerPoint. Well, I put it on. Can you put it on slideshow, Gary? Um, let me get to it. The slideshow well, on one I, slide. I, I, there's a lot of significance to this because, first of all, I, I'm sure I, I I have to assume that this is a recent um, endeavor. Uh, that let me hit each one. No, it's not working. Well, I tell you what, take it out of there then. And see if you can just can you just show it in a regular uh, picture uh, viewer? Because it well, works. Let me show right. each picture. Let me show each picture. This one, that one. Are oh, there's twenty two of them? Well, there's a total of twenty two images, but. We Gary, can you drag? It. Can you like drag it? Can you drag? Like I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna pause it right, so we pause can. It. Go. Ready? Okay. All right. So this is um, a GIF that, uh, that was made by the guy that we call the wizard, and basically he superimposed an image of uh, Ranger Crowder 
over the dis image of the disputed guy. And what the wizard pointed out is that if you look at the, if, that as we put him over, that we, we see the same slope of the shoulders, the same uh, orientation of the arms, uh, and the same length and position of the hands. Really, everything just basically just it's the same. It's the same. It's the same guy. It's the same guy. I mean, the very listen. Just think about it a minute. The very idea that you could take an image of James Book out and put it over this Texas Ranger and get the exact same configuration of his body, of his entire body, the way he's standing and holding himself and carrying himself, carrying his arms, is ridiculous. I mean, there's no way like that. I mean, when you think of all it the is. ways people stand, I mean, they slouch, they twist, uh, they, some people rock back on their heels, some people pitch forward on their toes. There's all kinds of things people do. This guy is standing straight and tall with his shoulders back, and he has his arms very relaxed, and they're down, and, and, they're, and there's just no uh, way that the, that they could not be the same man. I mean, nice job. Nice job, Ralph. Yeah, I, mean, really, I have the wizard to thank for this. It's a very yep. good thing. And, and to me, like I said, it's not 99%. It's 100% that this is Bob Crowder. And, of course, there's no way that old geezer guy, you know, is, is book out. So what that means is that James book out is not in the photo. That so I'll tell right. you what, if we have a minute or yeah. so left, I don't know how much time we have, go back to the very first image. Let's, let's talk about something there for a minute. Hold so, on, I'm going to have to pause to get us. Okay, here we're ready. Okay, I want to spend the rest of the time talking about the actual caption, what was written under the picture. Uh, because obviously, uh, if it contains the name James Bookout, uh, I have to think that the caption uh, was altered. Now, one idea that crossed my mind, and I'll be interesting to hear what you guys have to think about it, is that there, and one could say there's also the possibility that uh, that it was simply a mistake, that uh, that there was actually uh, Manning Clements and another FBI agent, but that mistakenly they put the name James Book out. Uh, but I don't think that's likely. I consider that unlikely. And the reason is that... If, if this really existed this way all this time, I would have found it, you know, a year ago when I was searching for newspaper articles on James Book. Out. The name would have pulled it up. That's the CIA I mean. specializes in stuff just it's like stuff this, Ralph. Like That's right. Okay. So let's go, let's go over what it says. It says, exhibits on display at FBI-sponsored conference. And then it says, Dallas Ranger Captain Bob Crowder checks exhibits with FBI agents Manning Clements and James Bookout, both of Dallas. Well, one of the things that occurred to me is uh, why, well, why, why, why was it? I'm, 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 I'm curious as to why um, they would bother putting in uh, that both of those agents were from Dallas. I mean, the whole photograph looks ridiculous. It looks as though it doesn't have any point. Well, anyway, to my mind, that I think that they had to come up with a new caption that included the name James Book out, and they wanted to uh, create a balanced look to the caption to make it look like it was uh, just filling in the space correctly. So they 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 came up with this both of Dallas. But just because uh, it was something, uh, you know, to put but, in. But what you have shown is regardless of assigning that name, they haven't got book out in the photograph. That, absolutely right. They, in other words, that's the most important thing. They have the name there, but the images are definitely not of James Book. There's no way any of those guys could be James well, Book out. It's I think you've done another, another nice extension. In the middle. Um, Another nice extension of your argument. Garrett, Gary, take us out. All right. It's the News JFK Show, number 167. Rouse and K, Dr. Fetcher, thank you very much. Thank and you both. Let's pray for Larry Rivera. Yes, it's indeed. Really for Larry. God bless Larry now. Rivera. Thank you, man. Good All right. You got it, Bye-bye. Bye-bye.